on this episode of the DJ Bob Show. What is your favorite word? Um, my favorite word is. Stop. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Welcome to the beginning of our birthday celebration. For the next couple months, we're going to be celebrating a huge milestone in the DJ Bob Show history. Ten years of existing on the airwaves in your podcast feed, doing all the things that you love. Going to kick it off. I'm going to turn the table a little bit. I called my friend Noel McNeil. You know him as Bear on... Bear in the Big Blue House, and tons of other things, and asked him to interview me. And things get interesting. You hear a lot of things from me that you wouldn't normally hear. So without further ado, enjoy. Well, let me just start off by saying thanks for having me on my show. Exactly. Yes, this is a nice little, like turnabout as michael scott would say on the office oh how the turntables and <laughs> yeah because you've interviewed me a lot so it's nice to be able to like sit down with you and talk to you because you're usually the one that's asking the questions and prepping the questions how long does it take you to prep a question does it depend upon the celebrity or is there just a a standard format of starting out with this and then going to that. Well, it, I, wa- I watch as much as I can of the person or listen to as much as I can, but I don't really prep. So, you wish, so does that way it sounds more natural? Yeah. Like, a, like can, I prep, like a, but I don't prep. Right. It's it's out of politeness. You want to make sure that the person you're talking to, you, you know, pronounce their name right. You know all their credits without turning it into just like a fan fest and reading or, it off a t- script. Right. And making it yeah, making it so staid and so so um, generic. But it's never been your problem. It's always whenever we've talked, it's always been very natural and very conversational. So, what made you want to do this? Like, the a show? Blog? Um, no. I, now, how many years? Well, 10. 10 years. That's a decade, people. Congratulations. <laughs> well, I wanted to start doing this show because somebody fired me. <laughs> Who fired you? And from what? We know this part. <laughs> so, and we've talked about it. So, I was working for my friend's radio station. Right. And he, I had mentioned a certain fast food company on the air, almost like an advertisement. Ah. (laughs) And I was young and stupid and did not know what I was doing. Um, Young and enthusiastic and not knowing what you're doing. (laughs) What can also, what can also, Warrant is stupid in this case. So I, um, so then I said, all right, well, nobody's going to hire me at this age. So let's build it from the ground up. So like what we did. Hmm. And like when you first started, do you remember your first show? Yes. It's like, who was your guest on your first show? Uh, That's, that's really cool. So when I, when I was when I was twelve years old, wanting to get into this, I used to listen to this children's radio show um, on AOL called Radio KOL, and it was a real wacky British guy with sketch comedy and kid music and interviews, and I looked up to him, and as the, as that show was ending. For my five-year run, I said, I'm a young host. Can you help me with this? And Rick Adams is his name. Still a wonderful Mm -hmm. friend. And, you know, 
we just started working together. So he was my guest for the first show. So the the man that inspired you to do this was your very first guest. Yeah. Do you still are you still in contact? Yes. Yeah. Um, what's he do? What's he doing now? He works for Spectrum News in LA. Okay. He does a lot of like reporting and stuff like that. Oh, all right. And like, how looking? Have you gone back and listened to it and kind of been? critical of yourself are you pretty proud of yourself or is it a combination of both things like hey i actually did this and oh, oh god like, it's, hey i doing? actually did this and oh god because it's such it's such from a fan perspective mm-hmm. and it's not researched it's not it's i'm not saying that it's not polished because it was my first show what do, what does anybody expect but right but at the same time there should have been some like balance to it you know what i'm saying yeah how long was it the interview um well the show was 4 hours all together. Wow. Okay. Live. Wow. But I split the interview up 20 minute segments within the four hours. Okay. So but it was the- so bad. It's like, dude, are you coming back on Skype? All right, we did it live. So we had right. to keep coming back to the computer. It was a mess. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> well, you yeah, would we'll never a, do that now. <laughs> no. Well, being a mentor, I'm sure he was a good sport about it. And uh, yeah. so, so, so you've learned since then shorter interviews and not so much live? <laughs> shorter interviews, condense, and if they are long, condense them. Right. Because I would love some i i love like long conversations because that's how you get the most out of people but the listening audience doesn't want that no the listening audience has you know they've they've got lives they got things to do yeah they, short, they can have a short attention span and so you want to get to the the gist and uh the the meat of it i'm a fan of uh i don't know if he's going to do it again this year but last year david Tennant did, had oh, a podcast yeah, called, you turn david, me on to that yeah, David David Tennant does a podcast, and I'm sure he sat down and like talked with with Jody Whittaker and Michael Sheen and and, and John Hamm and um, all these people and Whoopi Goldberg, and I'm sure he he went on and on and asked them, but then it was very nicely edited, so it was just like just under thirty minutes. Yeah, and it was lively and it was entertaining and it was interesting and it was very conversational. While him still bringing up points for them to yeah. to talk about, you, you need to. And if you and the other thing I've learned is that we we talk a lot off air and we talk about personal things. Like, like nobody needs to know your dirty laundry. That's another no. thing I've learned. Like, I want people to know me, but not too much about me. <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, you're playing you, you, you're playing the host, and so it's the guest who's the the priority, and not your own personal, uh, you know, issues or anything that that might be be going. Because you want to focus on them. So yeah. You're, you're the host, you know, you're inviting them in. Like, you know, if you had them over to your house, it's like, come in, sit. Now, let me tell you about me. No, so the, something so, something <laughs> kind of like what you did in a certain suit. Bear suit. Um, <laughs> yes, once upon a time in a big blue house, like always inviting everybody in and tagging along as this poor Bruin was either trying to read a book or take a nap and constantly being interrupted. Bearish but, interrupted. Exactly. That's what the writers called it. So, do you have any, because I mentioned David Tennant, you mentioned Rick Adams, do you have any other people you admire whose podcast you, you listen to and Maybe take notes like, ooh, that's good. And, oh, maybe I should try that. I listen to Puppeteers a lot. Mm-hmm. 
marriage. They are both wonderful people, Cam and Adam. They, they've kind of helped me in more ways than one. Like I say to them, like, who do you recommend? Or how was this interview? Can you hear the rough cut of this before you upload this? So they're really like a, they're really like a, a sounding board that I can just give stuff no, to. Yeah. Give me no, they're good. I've I've done their podcast as well, and they're 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 very good. They also know that that balance of asking a question and then letting the guest actually talk. I did a podcast um, once where the 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 host, very nice person and very enthusiastic, but basically would just talk the majority of the time so that if you really like listened and did the math, the host was doing like 85% How do you of the talk. with something like that. Well, you just kind of like, you just kind of like be patient and you, you just kind of wait. And maybe if there's a, you know, a breath, you can like interject, but it's the kind of thing where the question would also be, become his or her opinion. And so it's like, well, you're kind of answering the question for me or yeah. you really don't want my answer to this or now you want my opinion for what you just said. So yeah, it's, it's knowing when to ask, you know, what questions to ask, let the person answer. And then if there's a follow up, then you follow up briefly in order for them to continue, <laughs> you know, even, even little things like how so like, really like, Give us an example and let them actually talk. The person that I'm talking on has now gone to do like a, a solo podcast where the person just actually just is there and just talking, which is exactly yes. perfect, which is fine. So it's like not everybody is made for, for, for this. I mean, everybody is figuring out. You you figured out like what worked for you. It's a long and, time. And yeah, how long did it take? Now, you know, this is the tenth year. You started when you were how old? Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. So it's the tenth anniversary. You are a quarter of a century old. <laughs> so this is quite two milestones for you. Did you ever think that doing this would last this long, like an entire decade? No. Why? I thought it was a fun thing to do in the summer between middle school and high school. I really did. And so it was just it was just like a lark. It was just something to fill the days until going back to school. I just because it wasn't and then also I don't think you know this. It wasn't even kid centric at first. Right. I mean after I mean you've had me on where I was fairly kid centric, considering what I what I do. But uh like who were your other guests who uh you've had like in those early days in those early days it was a lot of connecting with bands that were just starting out or a book author that a friend knew so it was a lot of like favors <laughs> yes to put it lightly and i don't mind doing those because some of them are decent yeah. and some of them are really a headache to get through. I'll tell you off the air. Um, <laughs> uh, but now I think about those early days and I say there was no structure to this. There was literally no there was no roadmap to where this was going to go. And now there kind of is. So you found your your niche. You found your your footing and your theme. Yeah, and it's not just about interviews. It's just how to talk to people, how to make them feel like they're welcome, how to give them the moment without overstepping. It's. It's a real tricky thing because sometimes you want to interject all the time, but you can't. Yes. So. Exactly. Yeah. And you just, you, you want them to speak. Yeah. Please. 
Have you have you ever had a guest where it, it was like the opposite, where it was pulling teeth, like you really had to draw out what you wanted them to say? I, I've had a lot of guests where how do I say this politely? <laughs> they didn't know what they were signing up for. <laughs> Were people surprised because of the fact that you were still new to doing podcasts, or was it because of your physical and vocal condition? I think, and honestly, let's just stop right there. The physical and vocal condition doesn't really matter unless you're hearing it for the first time. Right. So... I think they just hear my voice and assume that I'm a kid or something. I don't know. Doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it's very condescending. I I imagine. I mean, because you have cerebral palsy, correct? Yeah. Right. So with this in mind, in terms of doing a podcast, what challenges have you experienced in trying to do a podcast with with cerebral palsy? You know, the challenges are very minimal. They're they're not a lot, but I get I guess my main challenge is just telling people that I I can't do live. I just can't do live it. Taxing, physically demanding. We have to stick to pre-record. Because then I can really, if I do have a stumble on a word or a phrase, I can go back and take how many time, take how much time I need to get it right. You know? Right. Yeah. That's the magic of editing. Yes. But I, so, use, I use it to its advantage. I really do. And it really... good. And, and you call. have a, and you have a special soundboard that you're using. Yes, I do. I use I use a soundboard that is generally on touch screen, so there there are, there are no knobs, you just faders, and a touch screen, and it, I can just pick things apart. And then what happens is, what I'll do is. When I put it in my editor, um, I edit sometimes with my phone. There's a lot of technical things that really make this an easy um, career. And how long does it take to edit a show? Like, uh, like one of the shows that you and I have done, where we've talked for like an, an hour. Like, oh, how long does it take to edit? An hour? Um, well... And I say it out because I've been known to drone on, so it's just like <laughs> okay. What, what <laughs> how you the best wonderfully ex- edits? <laughs> the best example I can give you with you was a was when Bear and the Big Blue House turned twenty. We did a reunion with all of you guys. Remember yes. that? Yes, I do. I remember that. Me, Peter Lenz, Tyler Bunch, and Big Eibner, who is out in. Uh, Colorado now. We were all on the phone at the same time. Uh, Peter, Tyler, and I were up at Pete's place. And we called in and we did the the whole interview with you. That was so surreal. That was so cool. Just knowing that I put that together. like It was it was the first time that all four of us had actually sort of been in the same kind of situation since the show. So it was really special. It really was special to to uh, see and hear uh, Vicky again. That took four days to edit. Like, that took four days, and we were we were pretty much just talking back and forth. I mean, it was about like what an hour, but it took four days to make it nice and clean, and yeah. people not talking, excuse me, not talking over each other, and because that was a fun show. That was good. I don't feel like. You should know where an edit is. 
Like yeah. you, you shouldn't be able to tell. Oh, they edited that. Right. It should. It just should just be just kind of natural and flowing seamlessly. Well, that, which is the mark of of a good editor, so that it doesn't stand out. And you, of course, have learned how to do that. And now I have an editor who helps me to just. I have someone helping me edit the shows, and I work with them. Um, I work with them. I'm on a Skype call with them, and I'm looking at their screen as they edit, so I'm not just sitting there. Well, here it is. You edit it for me. I'm literally there, like, watching everything. Because... Help conduct it, and because because it's your show, you want them to be aware of what should be tightened up or kept in while still keeping true to the tone of who you are. Yeah. And what I, what I do now with the show is I put a quote from the guest at the beginning of the episode. It's nice. Something that really puts the episode in perspective for people without spoiling much. Right. And because I, it's, it's a teaser. And I re I really like picking that, picking that quote each week and finding a meaningful yet tactful, maybe funny thing that they've said. You've heard a lot of my recent interviews. So if you'd like me to give you an example of like how one of those went down, I can. Well, you recently interviewed uh, Tom Everett Scott, who is this really neat, neat actor. And, uh, and so how did you contact him? That was through... I had interviewed the creators of the Netflix series The Healing Powers of Dude, which I don't know if you watched through last talk. Um... Right. Not yet, no. But now I have the time, so yes, I okay. will. <laughs> so he played the father on that show, and I knew, I knew his work from the cult classic film "That Thing You Do," which is, yes. which is an amazing film. And I think that I think that it should be more appreciated. But he was the father on that show, and I told the creators. I'm like, can you get me in contact with Tom? Thinking nothing would happen. They probably get this all the time. And they're like, yeah, sure, well, we send an email out. And I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> like cause people say things to me all the time. And they actually did it. They followed through. And that was really cool. And how is he as a guest? He was a wonderful guest. Right. Well, I mean, you've kind of been known now as like, you know, the king of pop culture and having on like pop culture people. Like you you had the creator of Blues Clues that as a guest. Fun. Which being a fan of Blues Clues, I'm sure you were over the moon that you actually got to, that, to sit that down was and talk through to Nickelodeon. That was really cool that they trusted me and they showed they they sent me the episode two months before premiere, and that was just cool that they trusted me with their brand and property. So keeping to the integrity of the show and making sure that the network was happy was my main goal with that one. Well, especially for pretty much one of the most famous series they ever did, and the fact that they were bringing it back. So it was not only a sense of trust in you, but also confidence. Like, okay, this guy, as you said, this guy knows what he's doing. We're going to give him the episode. We, you know, trust him not to share it, but this way he'll be prepared. And you were. And how was she, how was she as a guest? She was great. But then what happened after that, she literally said, I'm, I'm like going through this interview and she said, I've been looking forward to this all day. Your information in the world of podcast. I know who you are. I'm aware of you. This was so much fun. So you can't ask for anything better than that as a host. <laughs> <laughs> 
And especially from someone who created one of your childhood memories. Yeah, I mean, it was because Bruce Cruz was this juggernaut of a thing. Bear was too. But like, there was so much hype around this reboot coming out. And it was just so cool to have this sense of like validation that I'm trusted in this in the world of media and it's not just a cute to little thing that I do. So that was so would you say that was one of the highlights of your your tenth anniversary celebration of your the podcast? I feel like that and the interview with Craig Thomas, the creator of How I Met Your Mother. That was yes. another big one that and, and now how did you get that? That was Twitter. That was um <laughs> the magic and of Twitter. That was Twitter because he posted that his son was getting teased or something and bullying needs to stop. And I said, I know what it's like. I have some palsy and I'd be willing to talk to you about this and disability inclusion in media. And then I realized that he was such a big Muppet fan. <laughs> of course, he knows Jason Siegel from How I Met Your Mother, but then we ended up talking about like the Muppets for like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So we had to like trim that down and, and, and make that digestible for people. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you... It's really a mixed bag of what I'm trying to do. Like, I, and I also realize that not every interview is going to be your favorite. You're not going to like any, every person that you interview. You're not going to enjoy their answers, but you're giving them the, the vessel to express themselves and what they want to talk about. So do you have a, a, a list? You don't have to name names, but are you thinking of, of like who you, you, you would want to have in the future? I thought of, I knew you were going to ask me this if we prepped beforehand. Um, no, this is a natural conversation, oh, Rob. Yeah. What are you telling your viewers? <laughs> what are you telling your listeners? <laughs> this is off the cuff. Right, yes. <laughs> uh, yes, it's just a conversation. So, <laughs> I'm cheating. Um, I... Um, <laughs> I do. I have five that I always go back to when I want to book interviews. And I'll tell you. Who are Tom, they? Tom Bergeron. Tell us. Hey, tell us. Tom Bergeron. Okay. Tom Bergeron is a great guy. I've met him more than once because Bear got to be on uh, Hollywood Squares when Whoopi Goldberg ran it and when um, Henry Winkler's production company took over. And Tom is a great guy. During that time, he would because Hollywood Squares was done on the weekend, and he would fly back on Sunday night. He would take the red eye so that he could be back home to take his daughter to school Monday morning. And then on Friday, he would get the, the, the evening flight and come to California to Hollywood Squares. So he is a truly nice guy. So if you're listening, Tom Bergeron. <laughs> I was, I'm almost tempted to like, message these people on Instagram and see what happened. Um, because I can only do So, and do uh, it. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> yeah, there's a... So Tom Bergeron, who there's else? There's this author that I really like. His name is Stephen Shabosky. He wrote a book that changed my life and got me in a real, a real dark place. And I really want to thank him. But then he wrote this book called the perks of being a wallflower. Yes, now a major. And then he <laughs> directed the film, at, the film adaptation of Wonder. So I just want to talk. Oh. I want to just pick his brain. He's got such an impressive filmography, and his story is fascinating. Listening to him on podcast is a treat. I'm kind of. Uh, I'm kind of wishing everything I could get my hands on when it came to it. So fascinating. 
Um, I, uh, there's one more. The list and the list. But <laughs> another one more. Nice. The last one I want to bring up is LeVar Burton. Ah. Because that's a lot of territory. That's not only children, that's <laughs> Star Trek, that's, that's his directing gig that he does. It's roots, it's reading Rainbow, it's, yes. He's like, he does so much. There's a lot of stuff that we could cover with that. Ah. What else you got for me? That's pretty much it, because it's like, you have come so far in 10 years. I mean, I can't think of podcasts that have lasted that long and been that consistent. And someone who has this much passion, you've got a passion, Bob, for this. You were born to do this. And you're not letting anything get in your way from doing it. And the fact that you've had such amazing guests and that you still want to have more amazing guests shows that, you know, maybe I'll get to interview you again for your 20th anniversary. <laughs> well, on the, on that note, I have a question for you just to, I have a question for you just as a conversational piece. You've been, you've been on okay. the show so much, a lot. But <laughs> how have you seen it change? Like, what do you think as a guest? Like, cause you've seen every iteration of this thing. Oh yeah, I mean, you've 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 come a long way. I remember that first time I I I talked to you, and you know, I was I was flattered and I was pleased, and I definitely didn't mind being a guest and helping. But and there was like a definite like you know you were a fan. I was like, okay, he's a fan. <laughs> And he was a fan, and you also had like a couple of friends on too, who were also fans, <laughs> and just like getting together. It was like, okay, it's fine. And since then, it's now just you, and it's very one on one with you and your guest, and you're talking, and it makes it very conversational. And so I've seen how you've learned like what works and what doesn't, um, not only for you, but also for your, your listener. And for your guest as well. So you should be very proud of yourself. Well, you you were you were the guy who basically told me that it was okay to cover this stuff on a full time basis because I was kinda like you taught me that it's okay to like like this stuff and talk about this stuff at at a at an adult level. Because you guys are adults creating and you're not kids. So they're... No, but we're ch we can be childish, but, but we're not kids. But you know what I mean, so. like, it's not... <laughs> like, when people think kid shows, they think, oh, kids watch it, but adults create it. And adults make what you see on screen. Yeah, exactly. So there is a, there is a certain responsibility for that, which producers should keep in mind not just churning it out in the name of a of a product or a brand so and that's like with you you're not churning this out you have you this is this is your passion this is your love and you really you are really crafting this now so that with each guest it, it just gets better and, just, and better and i've i've learned this recently i've learned this like fairly recently I don't want I don't want people when people come on my show I don't want them to be a guest. I just want them to tell their story. I don't want them to feel like this regal sense like oh I'm a guest. Like, no, you're, no, you're <laughs> talking, you're communicating, you're sharing your art or what you do. You're embarrassing yourself sometimes by admitting a funny anecdote. It's been a real joy to just have this, this brand that I've kept and that I've polished and I've honed my skills because I'm sure you've seen podcasts 
change names and change brands and change logos all the damn time. Oh yeah, it's just like you know, just like just figure out like what you want to do and who you want to be. It's like because and 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 that's the thing. There's so many like podcasts and blogs and vlogs now that you know find find your strength, find your niche, find your theme, and just stick to that. Don't be all over the place. So just like you said, it was all over the place in the beginning, and now you know exactly like what you want and there is like this theme to your to your whole show and your whole and there are times where I'll break the theme like if there's like a disability related interview or do that or one of the things I want to do eventually is like interview people who shaped me like teachers like People from my personal life that made me who I am. So it's this whole 10 year journey, I want people to get to know me and not DJ Bob, the moniker. You know? And I've worked really hard on doing that. So to make it more yeah. human, stay human. So to wrap things up, I'm going to take a page from James Lipton and Inside the Actor's Studio (laughs) and ask the questions that he would uh, ask them based on uh, an odd pivot and Marcel Proust. So, what is your favorite word? Um, My favorite word is... (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) 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 <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> what is your least favorite word? Can't. What turns you on? Creative people. What turns you off? Arrogant people. What sound or noise do you love? A good edit, which I will make a lot of today. <laughs> What sound or noise do you hate? Fireworks. This is one of my favorite questions. What is your favorite curse word? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and last one. When you get to heaven and get to meet God, what do you want him or her to say to you? I liked your podcast. Can you interview me now? <laughs> 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 Perfect. <laughs> DJ Bob, thank you. This was awesome. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. Keep being you. You are a great guest, Bob, <laughs> on your show. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name's Ari Zizzo. I'm a singer, songwriter, and producer, originally from New York currently living in Los Angeles, California, and I wanted to talk super quickly about my experience with the DJ Bob show. It was amazing. It was so awesome. DJ Bob is the man. He asked so many amazing questions and got me super excited to talk about what I love to do and what I'm passionate about. DJ Bob, man, thank you so much for giving me and so many others a platform to talk about what we love to do. I'm so excited that people will be able to listen to our interviews and feel informed and hopefully feel inspired to go after what they're passionate about and what they want to do with their lives. Again, DJ Bob, you're the man. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Happy 10th anniversary. You've been killing it for so long and you should be so, so proud. Love you, brother. Take it easy. Celebrating 10 years of pop culture past and present. This is the DJ Bob Show.